Hello everyone, Mark Clayton with Restore Cars again. As promised, this is a detailed video on how we restore uh, Packard 12 engines. This is a 1935 Packard V12 we pulled out of the uh, car and um, you just do all the usual tear down stuff. Uh, you can see our shop heater in the background, we shop heater the rods, the crank, all of the uh, cast iron parts and uh, that's of course after we bake it all. Um, the first thing we had to tackle is these rods. You can see that somebody put some very poor th side thrusts on them and you can see how that bearing right there that we're running not square and parallel. So we had some challenges in getting the rods back to the way they should be which is uh, like this and that is the um, side thrusts are completely welded up all the way around and then we CNC cut that all back down again so that we have a, a square and parallel surface that takes up the side thrust to 4000 like it should be. Um, so then that's what you end up with. We check all the rods for straightness, we hone them out, and we put in uh, modern modern bearings. And then, of course, we check everything again. Um, we have a 14 inch cutter on our F79A that cuts these, uh, uh, decks the heads and the blocks, anything else we want to deck. Next operation is Renishaw probing. We find out where the hole centers are for all the cylinders, and we can either bore on those. Uh, values or we can bore on whatever value we want to put in there. Maybe somebody messed up in the past and they didn't get the the hole in the right spot so this is really nice to have this information and uh, we can make the corrections that we have to do and it's just a simple boring operation to go down in there and get it within about four thousandths and then over to the HP7A which is our diamond hone and uh, we go ahead and hone to, to fit the pistons and uh, the nice thing about this machine is we can cut thousands of holes with a set of diamonds. And this little computer here tells us when our hole is, is perfectly straight. And um, then we'll go in there and use a board gauge and, and do our normal checking like everybody else. Um, the next thing is into the valve machine. This is a Rottler SG80M and uh, it cuts all the seats of the valves. It um, does it all three angles in one shot. Any valve can go in any hole. And I honestly think that 80% of your break in is your valves. And uh, with this, we found that 789 pulls on the dyno, it's all done. It's set to go. Onto the crank, and somebody had hard chromed up this journal. And as you can see, it was flaking off. It almost broke the crank machine when we were uh, uh, trying to get it off there. They even peened it and tried to get it to stay. Well, it's the wrong way to do it. We welded it up, ground it down. Randy Winberg just does, does a fantastic job on our crankshafts for us. It was just amazing. A four micron finish. Uh, on the thing and it balanced up just beautiful on these v12s you don't have to run bob weights on a balancing and um, and so it makes it a lot easier look at the sizes on this crank randy just did an amazing job uh, i got about two tenths off on one main bearing is all um, and i measured it like four times because I've, I've never gotten a crank back that is this good um, so it makes very easy work of me to go over onto the uh, uh, onto the line boarding machine uh, because once I set my mic to one size, I can just go. Uh, we like two thousandths clearance. I know the book calls for one and a half, but um, we really like two. It it just makes the engine run so much better, and you'll see how easy this crank spins. Here I am setting up to do this the thrust. The book calls for four thousandths. We're always shooting for four to five thousandths on this, and I believe this one came out at five thousandths. Um, it gave us just barely enough Babbitt on this thing for me to accomplish this operation. But it turned out real good. Uh, we landed right on 5 thousandths in thrust. And uh, we were within 2 tenths on all of our main bearings on being the size of where I wanted to be. So uh, it worked out just perfect. Um, the next thing that, that we needed to do is, is measure it and make sure that our crank is in the middle of that bearing. And um, so, you know, it just keeps shaving it off here. I've sped this up quite a bit because this operation does take some time. Uh, we have to keep checking it, making sure we're staying in the middle. Here I use a depth micrometer and make sure that both sides of the bearing are the same and make sure our crank is right in the middle. And then, uh, of course, use an outside mic or an inside mic to check the, um, uh, the width of, the, of the, uh, the surface area there. So we go ahead and install the crank in the line boring machine, torque down all of the um, main bearing caps, and the moment of truth, give it a spin, and the thing just spun beautifully. 
Uh, some engines come out better than others, and this was an exceptionally nice engine. After we get it off the line boring machine, it's off to uh, get the thing cleaned, and so we roll it outside, and we just blast the heck out of it with a hot seat to make sure it's super clean. And we get it uh, dried off real quick so it doesn't rust. First operation is to drive in the cam bearings. So we have a normal cam bearing tool. I get all the cam bearings uh, driven driven in. Sometimes I have to make new ones, and I've put out videos on how I do that. Uh, this one I didn't have to. Uh, the cam went right back in, and you have to be so careful with these babbitted bearings uh, not to nick one as you're putting the cam in. Um, but this one went in just beautiful. We marked all the bearings before we took them out and make sure we got everything in the exact same spot. And we put it in there, and she just uh, spun beautifully. So here it is. The cam is uh, is ground and, and cleaned up and, and already installed in the block. Uh, on these Packard 12s, you have to make sure that your uh, drive gear for the oil pump and, more importantly, the distributor is lined up. There's a, a mark on each one of the gears. If you don't get that in the right spot, your distributor won't be in the right spot, and your life is very bad. So uh, be sure and do that. Here's all of the uh, roller rocker and the hydraulic box assemblies. They're all uh, cleaned, rebuilt, new springs, lap seats, the whole nine yards. Uh, so then we start on the odyssey of um, doing the uh, valves. And uh, we have a special fixture that pushes that hydraulic arm back. And then we can uh, make sure that we get the right value. We stab uh, 35 thousandths and the book calls for 35 to 55 thousandths. We like it down on the lower end, just gives you more life in the engine. So it's a back and forth between that valve machine and uh, to the block and checking it with a feeder gauge and making sure that all of them are in the right right parameter. It, it's just a time consuming thing. Uh, I set up my valve grinder as close to the block as I, I can. I don't want any of that stuff to get in the block so I set it up a few feet away and make sure that I'm grinding away from the block and then I can do it as quickly as I, as I can. So uh, back and forth, back and forth, and um, eventually you get there on 24 valves, uh, and you can only take a couple thousand at a time when you're grinding them off. So uh, here they are uh, all installed, or, or going down the line to install them. Um, it's just a time-consuming uh, process, but you have to get this step right. To come back and get this fixed is, is just a tremendous amount of labor, so um, right the first time. All the valve springs are checked on these. Um, on this particular job, we had to add 60,000 shims to get them to the book value. On, on um, They have a, a loose value where they're just sitting there on the bench, and then there's a compression value at a certain height. So that's what I'm using that um, digital caliper for. A lot of these engines have uh, valves that have an upside and a downside on them, a tighter wound end and a looser wound end. And so just pay attention to that. Make sure you get the right, uh, the right direction on those springs and um, uh, go down the line. On a Packard 12, you have to start on one end and you work your way all the way down to the other end. Otherwise, you don't have enough room to get your tool in there and it makes your life very difficult. Okay, time to set the crank in. And I use a overhead jib crane to help me because I'm usually by myself. So I lower it down in there nice with the crane and um, it makes it really easy for me to do that. Back into the engine clean room and uh, torquing down the main bearings and um, the moment of truth, it just spins beautifully. Uh, beautiful crank work and beautiful bearing work turns into great engines and this one really turned out well. Time to get the pistons out and uh, line everything up, count all the pieces, make sure everything is right and correct. I have had an incident or two where, guess what, they sent me the wrong wrist pin or something. So um, I like to, to lay out every part and count them and make sure I don't have too many parts or not enough parts. Um, there's nothing worse than getting down to the end. You got one more piston to go and there's three keepers sitting there. Well, did you have an extra one in the package or did you forget to put one in? Here I am drilling out the bearings. Uh, make sure that you get all the oil passages drilled in those new bearings before you install them. The block here is pretty much all put together. I put the head studs in and um, then I turn my attention back to the bottom side. I put all the oiling system together. Of course, everything has been cleaned and inspected and pressure tested. Here's the heads all uh, surfaced off. Minutes off to the paint booth. I like to put the heads on uh, without any nuts or anything like that. And I also like to put the uh, manifold gaskets on and it just kind of uh, has a nice surface that way. 
Uh, here it is. We got it uh, painted. This was a little bit of a different job and that we had to put patina back in this engine. This is an older restoration car and the owner wanted it not to look totally uh, brand new Pebble Beach on the outside. Of course, on the inside, everything is uh, has to be perfect. We won't do it any other way. Uh, but we're happy to accommodate somebody who has an original car and they want to keep that original look. So uh, once it's assembled up to this point, it's back out of the engine clean room over to the jib crane and uh, lowered onto the dyno cart. Then the fun begins. Uh, it's about a full day to hook everything up. It sort of looks like a patient in an operating room. Boy, it sure is a good feeling. And you get it all in there and you hit the starter button and she just goes right off. It is absolutely a wonderful feeling. And it, after all that work, she just fires right up. Um, it's good. It's a good feeling. The um, break-in starts with about an hour of just running the engine, inspecting everything, making sure there's no leaks and all of that kind of thing, and just varying the speed. and And I just like to get the temperatures in the engine and let it run for a while. Play with the oil pressure a little bit, test the oil system. I take them clear up to 100 pounds, just make sure nothing blows. And then it's time to uh, start making some poles. This is our uh, dyno. It's a Stuska uh, twin uh, rotor dyno. It's uh, called an SX211, 1600 horsepower dyno. Obviously, don't need all that, um, but it sure is nice to have it if you do. Um, this is our uh, dyno bench. Uh, we have a hand throttle because of all the different hookups that we deal with. Uh, dual screen display. We have all the parameters in there. Um, it's really a nice easy way to control the engine. Um, here I am. I'm running it up on another pole and we just keep doing poles until about 10 poles. After 10 poles it's pretty much broken in. From there on out it's all tuning and sometimes you can do them in five poles and sometimes it takes 25 more poles to get them really dialed in. Um, we have to uh, adjust timing and carburation and all this kind of thing and uh, just make sure that everything is, is, is right. And once I know that it's right, it uh, comes back off the dyno and uh, we uh, assemble this one over in our body shop because we have a two-ton jib crane over there. It's a really nice way to do it. Uh, we've got a load leveler there. It's one guy can assemble these engines over there. It's really a neat setup. So uh, back into the car and then... Uh, It'll be back onto the road. Um, we also have a chassis dynamometer, and we'll go ahead and put this on the chassis dyno and make sure everything is running good before we deliver to the customer. So that's pretty much how it all goes, whether it be a Packard or Lincoln or whatever. They're all pretty much the same. Thanks for watching. Take care.